You came here from a school that's part of a has a very intense football rivalry. How did the coaching staff there frame it to the players, and have you adopted a similar approach here with this rivalry? Great question. Um, you know, for coming from that rivalry, uh, what you knew that it was 365 days a year, um, that it was about bragging rights. Uh, it was uh, it meant a lot to a lot of people. And, you know, having a chance to, to play in it, um, you experienced it as a player, but it wasn't until I got out into the professional world that I realized, like, okay, like, folks are really serious about this. They, they, they plan their entire year uh, around uh, the football season and then this game uh, at the end. And, uh, and I sensed that was very similar here um, from, from day one. Uh, you know, you get all the congratulatory texts and welcome to the family. We're glad you're here. Now beat tech. All right. So so I was like, OK, I get it. This feels very, very familiar. I uh, haven't had a chance to coach in this game, obviously, with everything that happened uh, last year. And, um, you know, I do want to take a second just to acknowledge uh, Coach Pry and, and uh, Virginia Tech's administration and their program for all the support uh, that they gave us uh, last year. Uh, I thought it was uh, unbelievable uh, just to, to see uh, their folks showed up in town um, to, to be with us, to help us grieve and um, continued support uh, all throughout uh, the process of determining whether or not we're going to play the game and even beyond that, uh, still continue to, uh, to, to feel the, uh, the appreciation. So uh, you can tell that there's a, there's a very, very uh, strong level of respect, uh, but we also know that what happens those three hours uh, on Saturday is going to last for the entire year. Uh, so very similar um, in terms of the feel uh, and what I anticipate the, uh, the game's going to be like and then kind of the significance uh, of the game. Uh, I think you do have to you know, frame it the right way. Uh, because uh, it's it's a long week, and uh, really it's it's all year. So everyone talks about it all year, and then leads up to this week, uh, trying not to put you know uh, undue pressure uh, on the guys, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, you got to prepare uh, the same way that you prepared uh, for other games. So the way you frame it is is this is uh, just like any other game in terms of the preparation process, but the significance uh, of the outcome is uh, is a little bit different. Uh, what would a win mean for you guys going into the offseason? It'd be back-to-back -back wins. Uh, what would it mean for you guys going going forward? Just momentum uh, going into um, the offseason, and, and then understanding. You know, one of the you know the the, the, the disappointing things is that we didn't take care of. Uh, uh, opportunities early in the season. And so what you lose is you lose 12 to 14 more practices, which is an opportunity to continue to develop your team. So it would create great momentum uh, into the, the final weeks of school uh, so we can attack training and then you know give the guys uh, some energy while they're away over the break to continue to uh, put in the work necessary, uh, not necessarily to make up for what we uh, you know didn't take advantage of, but not lose momentum. And I think in recruiting, uh, it helps. Uh, but just for the guys uh, to be able to do something that, that, that hasn't been done since 03, uh, to be able to finish the season uh, with, uh, with two wins would be big. Yeah, you already mentioned this, but you didn't get to play those two last games mm -hmm. last year. So is there a sense of, of gratefulness and just privilege to be able to play these last two games? Yeah, it's a privilege uh, uh, to play any game. And, and I think that uh, last Monday, uh, was was also a, a vivid reminder for us just to, to have an appreciation for life and appreciation for opportunity to, to play. And so uh, it's, all, it's Thanksgiving. Uh, one of the things as a coach, uh, and, and you guys know as well in your profession, uh, you're, you're ready to give up Thanksgiving. You're ready to give up Christmas uh, uh, until you retire. That's what I tell the guys. I said, I'm, I'm so used to uh, playing uh, Thanksgiving, playing Christmas. And when I retire, then I'll get to enjoy those, uh, those holidays like, uh, like normal folks. But, but yes, definitely a, a, an appreciation for the opportunity to play, um, and then also to, you know, want to want to think talking about Thanksgiving. You know, want to want to talk about all the folks that don't get recognized. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to uh, give up their time this weekend here in town uh, to prepare for the game. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, uh, sporting events that are taking place uh, throughout the department that a lot of people are um, uh, are giving up their time. They're in there cooking popcorn uh, for the weekend, preparing for everything that's going to take place. So really want to give a shout out to uh, to all the folks to, uh, behind the scenes that don't get recognized uh, that, that are going to pull this game off for us and, and make it uh, an ease of transition as we get ready to play uh, and entertain uh, everybody. But uh, really grateful for, for just an opportunity to coach and play and, uh, and in life and 
Um, and then, you know, to, to – I mean, we're talking about a rivalry. You know, it's, it's a football game. We're talking about a rivalry and, uh, in the grand scheme of things, right? Uh, but, but it is a big deal. And there's a lot of folks that, uh, that give up their time um, during this holiday season to, to make it possible for us and all the other uh, sporting events that are taking place here uh, on grounds. Yeah, this is obviously the first time you and Pry will meet. You talked about how important this would be going into the off season, but how important would this one be in terms of this new era of the rivalry? Right, it's 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 an opportunity for both of us. Uh, we're 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 battling and jockeying to say, man, this is our state. I mean, he's saying that that uh, that they want to own the state. We want to own the state, right? That's that's what happens when you have a have a rivalry. But. Uh, I got a tremendous amount of respect for, for Coach Pry. A relationship goes back to uh, my days at South Carolina State when I was uh, on the staff with, uh, with his younger brother. Uh, so a tremendous amount of respect for he, uh, his younger brother, his dad, his family. It's a football family. Um, but it's going be, gonna to be big uh, because it's, it's the first time that we get to show and prove. Uh, you know, we get to talk about, man, we want to, you know, recruit the best players in the state. We want to, uh, you know, take ownership of the state. Uh, and now we get a chance to kind of settle it on the field. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's important for, for, for each program. Uh, but then also it's, it's an opportunity for uh, all of the recruits from the state of Virginia to, to see both, uh, both teams showcased. Coach, uh, first of all, I want to wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving, you and the Appreciate team as well. You know, obviously this year's a lot of close games, some that you won, some that you lost. Is there a lot you can take from the fact that you guys were competitive all year long under all the adversity and all the circumstances you've been under because you guys could easily be in contention for a bowl yourselves? Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different approaches or philosophies and how you build a program, uh, but I believe the, the first component is learning how to compete. Um, and, and obviously you, you're, you're playing to win uh, and coaching to win every single game. Uh, but the first thing you got to learn how to do is compete. You got to learn how to compete for four quarters. You got to learn how to compete day in and day out. Um, like kind of the fabric of what we're trying to create DNA-wise with, uh, with the program. Uh, not a big moral victory guy <laughs> because I want to win. Uh, but when you step back and you look at it and you put it in context, and all that uh, this staff and these players have had to persevere through um, is just, uh, uh, it's really been uh, eye opening to me, um, inspiring to me to watch them come to work every single day. Uh, even though when you're working and working and working and you, and you come up short, you're close, uh, but you don't, you don't get the reward that you, that you ultimately were after, but you find a way to come back the next day and do it again uh, just tells you uh, the, the type of individuals uh, that we have uh, in, this, uh, in this program. And, and I believe that the next step is uh, after you learn how to compete, you learn how to win. And, and I think in some of those close games, you know, we didn't make the plays that we needed to, to make. Uh, and that's that next step in saying, OK, we're not going to wait on somebody else not to make a play. Uh, we're going to have the confidence and the belief that we're going to be the ones that are going to make the play uh, to win the game. So um, so we're, we're making the progress. Uh, it, it, you'd like for it to happen faster. Uh, there's no question in terms of the results. Uh, but but really, really proud of, of, of this group of individuals, uh, staff and players for their resilience amidst uh, just the normal adversity that comes with the football season and then the things that were, were tacked on uh, because as a result of what happened uh, at the end of last year. Coach, your predecessor, and you mentioned the idea that, you know, this game is all year 365. Mm -hmm. Your predecessor sort of talked about it 365. Um, it was in the spring. It was in the preseason. Uh, the guys said that, well, obviously the game's important. You haven't had the same maybe year-round drilling of that message. What, what is your thought process kind of in, in when to bring it up and how right. often? So uh, going back to my experience, I've, I'm part of a very intense rivalry, and there was a time where you know we lost uh, several games in a row. and. After looking back at it, it, a lot of it was we, we put too much emphasis on it. Um, and so you got to balance it, right? So I think we all know the, the implication, the significance that it is 365 days. Uh, however, uh, you have to work towards each opponent uh, as you play those opponents. And for me, the approach that I'm trying to, to get everybody to understand is that every game Right, it's the most important game uh, of the season, and then when you get to this game, now here's the significance around this game, right? Because every game is going to have a different level of significance. Like you look at uh, JMU, JMU is a really, really important game. We lose by one point, we win that game. It's a 
we, we now we know the importance of that game, but the significance was different because it was the first uh, first game of the season back in Scott Stadium, uh, the tribute to the guys. Uh, so each game is going to have a different type of significance, but they're all uh, important, and they all are, are the most important games. So uh, that's been my approach, and, and trying not to put too much pressure on the guys uh, and understand that what it takes to win this game is what it takes to win every game. It's a certain level of focus, uh, trust for the preparation process, Process, respect for the process, uh, and not just you know trying to find that external motivation uh, associated with the significance around the game. Because uh, when we kick it off, everybody's going to be excited. But 11 guys got to go on the field and they got to do their job. Now they got to be passionate, they got to be energetic, uh, but they also got to be focused. And and I want to make sure that we have that right that right balance. Some improvement is you know players getting better the more snaps they play. Mm -hmm. And then some things are coaches adjusting. Um, you guys were, were pretty bad in short yardage early mm -hmm. in the year. You had the open date. You guys put together the, the package with mm -hmm. Broster House. Um, from that standpoint, how, I don't know, proud are you of kind of the results you've gotten because it was something that, that you guys kind of adjusted? Right. You know, I think, I think early on, uh, obviously, with the uh, – with the young guy not being up under center as much, uh, then you got Tony coming off of a shoulder. Uh, probably not the right thing to do with those guys, but you gain more more uh, experience with uh, with Grady, more time to practice it, um, bigger body. Uh, so so uh, grateful that the coaches you know invested the time to give us an opportunity to to be able to uh, to work, and and the guys have, have have taken ownership of it. You know, I think a lot of it too is is belief. Like you know, as coaches. You know, every every player is designed to score, right? And so every coach takes pride in making sure that when he when he dials up a, a play, it's designed to score. But but really, what it comes down to is is the execution, and it's a lot of belief and hard work and commitment uh, out of the guys. And uh, and then it also gave some guys a, an opportunity to have a role on the team. And so once they um, saw that they had an opportunity for a role, man, they maximized it. And it's been a, uh, it's been beneficial here uh, down the stretch. And and we'll go back in the off season as well and and study the first part of the season and see why we weren't uh, as successful and see can we can we clean it up because just as we adjust, uh, somebody else is going to adjust, right? So then it's a constant uh, game of uh, of cat and mouse trying to to make the right adjustments to stay one step ahead of your. Uh, your competitors? Uh, <clears throat> I think Virginia Tech leads the ACC in pass defense. Mm -hmm. What what challenges does their secondary uh, present yeah. to you guys? So their, their, their secondary plays uh, tight coverage. Right, so so they're going to get up in your face and and uh, and play some bump and run, uh, and then they can they, they they play some variations of zones. Um, uh, biggest thing is is they also you know get some pressure on the quarterback. Right, they 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 got some guys, some edge guys that can that can rush the quarterback, and um, you know when you can be uh, effective enough stopping the run, you put people in uh, in long yardage, and so they get people behind the sticks uh, as well. Uh, but the biggest thing is their corners can get up in your face and they can play you man coverage. Uh, so if they want to play cover one, they can play it across the board um, and be able to still have six in the box to play to run. Uh, so I think it's a combination of uh, good pass rush, uh, variations of coverages, and then they got the athletes out at corner that can that can play you in man coverage. You mentioned recruiting, how mm -hmm. this is a big weekend in that respect. Do you have a lot of guys visiting this weekend? For the you know, we, we, we do have a, uh, a, a good amount of, of individuals uh, from the state uh, coming into town and, and it's still working around some of the, the state the state playoffs. You know, some games are on Saturday, so some guys may not be able to make it, but I do anticipate that we're going to have a good group of, uh, uh, of in-state guys uh, that want to come, come see us play. Kind of building from what you said post game about the progress you've seen from this mm -hmm. team. When you look at starting six true freshmen, playing 12 true freshmen because of all the injuries that you guys had, how much is that kind of a glimpse of looking in the future and help you guys as you kind of work through what you need in the off season? Yeah, that that'll we'll, we'll really flip the page uh, next week uh, and and dive in uh, to that. Right now, it's it's, it's trying to trying to find. Uh, 11 guys, uh, the right 11 guys to, to run out there uh, in all three phases uh, of the game. And uh, I think long term, you can sit here and say, OK, you know, the, the, the snaps that Dre and, and Hardy have played are going to play dividends, Cam uh, as well. 
Um, and, and we'll assess that further uh, in more detail, you know, from a roster standpoint once we get through, uh, through this game. Um, you know, I think uh, it's a function of uh, kind of the direction we want to go in recruiting. And then also, you know, we, we have been hit, you know, by some injury bugs that have forced uh, some of those guys uh, to, to play. But I'm definitely uh, excited about the future. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the progress that the young guys uh, have made. Um, and uh, we need them to play big uh, this week. Uh, and hopefully uh, they don't they don't play like freshmen, they play like the experience that they've been able to gain uh, thus far this season. I don't know if he's as elusive as some of the running quarterbacks you face, but Drones is a big, strong <laughs> guy. Have yeah. you seen anyone quite like him, you know, as a runner yeah, at, at quarterback um, in your two years here? Um, uh, I would say he's very comparable um, to Riley, you know, at, uh, at Duke. A uh, big, big, strong guy uh, that can that can run, uh, that has uh, deceptive uh, deceptive speed. Um, you know, not not as you know quick as uh, uh, how do you say? Is it Castellanos? Castellanos. Uh, I don't want to say it wrong. Up at BC, he's a little bit more elusive, but like you said, drones is two thirty, and when he puts his foot in the ground, man, he's going he's going north and south. So. Um, Got to be prepared for that. And uh, 33 uh, is the running backs. <laughs> he doesn't get probably get talked about as much. But I, I tell you what, uh, I don't know if I've seen uh, I've seen one uh, in the last two years that has better contact balance uh, than him. If you watch him, I mean, he's and you know you teach your guys to go low. Uh, you don't want to tackle a back up high. You want to get down on his legs, and he runs through a lot of hits. Uh, on his legs and, uh, and keeps his uh, keeps his balance. So uh, we're going to have to do a great job uh, defensively uh, this week uh, in defending both both the uh, uh, the quarterback run and the uh, and the direct uh, running back runs as well. I'm not sure the timing of this, but submitting medical waivers that's something that you're already in process, like say Antonio Clary or possibly Ken Butler. That's yeah, some of those things we've already been uh, working on, and now it's it's at the. Uh, at the timing of the NCAA uh, to, to give us a, a response. And so uh, definitely there's a couple guys that uh, have expressed interest and we've already, you know, turned in paperwork to see can we, <laughs> excuse me, can we uh, take advantage of a, of, a, of a year. You know, Clary is a different situation than, than, than Cam Butler. Cam Butler's at the end of his, uh, he's exhausted all of his eligibility. Uh, so that would be a different decision than, than Clary and that Clary in essence does, does have an additional year uh, that he can take advantage of. Josh Ahern has played through some pain yeah. throughout the second half of the season. What's it meant to you that, that he's tried to kind of tough it out and give you some, some depth there at linebacker behind Cam and, and James? One of the toughest kids I've ever been around. Um, and and, and I, he's probably going to get mad at me for sharing this, but I'm going to share it anyway. Uh, underneath his cast, he had like like inch, inch and a half long pins, you know, stuck into the bone. And so every time he did anything with that hand and had any kind of contact, it was digging in. And when they went in to take him out, the pins were bent. So that just goes to, to show you just how much pain uh, he was, was playing through. Um, never complained. Um, I mean, you, you basically had to take his helmet to keep him out. It uh, just goes to show you how much he loves his teammates, how much he loves this, uh, this program. And uh, I've used him as an example uh, on many occasions of, of the sacrifice uh, that it takes uh, as a football player. And hopefully that creates inspiration for his teammates that, man, he's putting it on the line. And, you know, we talk about in football, uh, you, you're going to play hurt, uh, never going to ask you to play injured. You know, playing injured means medically they tell you that you, you cannot go. Uh, but there's going to be times where you got to play through some pain, and he's played through uh, a lot of pain. So he's got a very, very high uh, uh, pain tolerance and threshold. But uh, I, I can imagine what it's like when he goes home. Like, he, he's probably not showing it in front of us, but, man, it, he's, he's hurting. Uh, so I'm extremely grateful. And he went through an off-season surgery, you know, to, to come back and, and play with his teammates. So um, those are the things that – don't get talked about that, that a lot of people don't see. Uh, but as a coach, you have a tremendous amount of uh, appreciation because uh, he's, he's, he's one of, of many uh, on this football team uh, that is playing through injury, playing through pain uh, because they love their teammates uh, and they want to uh, they, they wanna see this program uh, do well. They want to be part of uh, laying, the, uh, laying the foundation. And so uh, I'm grateful for, uh, extremely grateful for, for Ahern. Coach Rudd is so impressed. He has the pins. Pins, yeah. But that, 
if you know Rudd, like you, you would you would know that Rudd would would like something like that. I don't know. You have to ask Rudd on that one. That. <laughs> Make a, but it doesn't. Make a little necklace out it of doesn't it. surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. And, and Coach Rudd is, is used to him as a as an example. And, and and if I had to speculate, you know, with Rudd's military background, like like there there's probably a, a, a just a sentimental value because of the appreciation that he has for for somebody uh, playing through through that amount of pain for his uh, for his brothers. It's like the Sam Hartman uh, rib necklace. That's what Rudd's gonna do. We'll, we'll <laughs> say, might. yeah, we'll say on the injury theme. Uh, do we have any update on Tony Musket on if he might be available this week? Yeah, weekend? he's, uh, you know, he's progressed to running, you know, and so so we're we're hopeful when it'll be end of the week uh, type deal. Uh, but he has uh, progressed to, to be able to to get out of the boot and uh, run around and uh, you know try to work his way back into practice. Mm -hmm. We've talked in here a bunch about Aaron uh, Famui, but yeah. uh, the fact that he is so far from home, um, and that his mom with, with the heart condition can't, can't fly. I guess she saw him play the BYU game and, mm -hmm. and, and has never seen him play here is what he told me. Um, how has he handled that, being so far from home and, and not having uh, family? Right. Um, you know, last week, you know, I think he got he let his emotions get the, the better of him a little bit, uh, but he had been doing you know so so well you know managing uh, all of that and uh, and then also too uh, just to put it in context, uh, his best friend uh, Deshaun Perry, and you know coming off of of that week, I could see how emotions could run high, not justifying at all. I got to do a better job of making sure that he doesn't uh, cross the line and and take it to where it's you know unnecessary, but. Um, his mom being that far away from home, you know, he's where he's married, he's got a son, he's managing all of that. Um, I, I kind of went through some 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 sp similar times when I was playing college, and that you know my mom was passed away, and my dad got to see me play a, a couple of games, and so I know how that can weigh on you, especially after games when you see all of your friends go to uh, their family, uh, and you know that your your parents are a long way away, and. Uh, you're wondering if the if the TV networks are going to have the game on TV. So uh, for him, uh, just to, to to see him accept the challenge that we put on him from a maturity standpoint, uh, and to see you know the progress that he's made, and uh, and I'm telling you, uh, when uh, when uh, when I first got here, I couldn't get two words out of him, and then to hear him put together an elaborate story in front of the team post practice and taking pride and joy uh, in that uh, just is a, is a testament to the growth uh, that he's uh, uh, that he's made but it's uh, he's got a lot on his plate and uh, and in my opinion he's uh, he's managed it uh, he's managed it well um, and, and I'm excited for him to to have his uh, uh, his opportunity to play one more time uh, as a cavalier uh, this coming Saturday and uh, one more with the roster house package because I'm kind of obsessed <laughs> with that right now. Uh, um, I was talking to Coach Pry this morning, and, and he said that one of the things that makes it hard to prepare for um, is the fact that you guys did uh, some different things out of it, right? right. To, to greasy, and, right. and uh, he said you ran one out wide out of that similar mm -hmm. set. And mm -hmm. um, in terms of your mindset, obviously you want those plays to work, but is there a value? even if those plays don't work getting out wide or throwing, that teams now have to question what you're doing when you're in that formation? And, and really that's, that's the objective uh, for all of your, uh, you know, offensive formations and structures is to, is to make the defense uh, prepare. And very similar defensively, right? They're going to show you one thing one time, uh, and that, but you got to prepare for it. So, yes, there is value in, in having – kind of the mystery around what the possibilities are. Uh, but at the end of the day, too, you, you, you got to invest time in, in, in becoming uh, proficient and sound and good at what you do. And so you gotta, you got to balance that. Uh, but it, the, the flip side is, you know, when he gets into those odd structures on third down, right, it, we have to start chasing possibilities uh, just like when we get into that formation. Uh, but uh, um, I've just been, like you said, impressed with the guys and the confidence that they have. Because uh, to be honest with you, the the one that was about two yards, I was close to. Uh, I was close to calling time. I was like, I don't know, boys. That's a that's a long way. Uh, but uh, but they said, Coach, we we got confidence in it. Let's uh, let's roll with it. So, uh, but just as things come and go, uh, they'll spend the off season figuring out a way to kind of defend it, and so then you have to evolve it. You thought you were going to throw on that. <laughs> 
Um, what's the status of Boley? I know you got yeah. hurt, uh, nicked up a little bit. And can you talk about how his development playing such a key role at left tackle? And, and would he be as good as he is now if he hadn't had that experience last year, even though he struggled last year? Right. So, so Boley's uh, obviously uh, day to day, you know, for us. Uh, so we're we're very uh, encouraged with the progress that he's making towards uh, towards Saturday. Um, and he's another one that's played through a lot of pain. You know, he's, he's had the hand, he's got the, the, the ankle he's been playing through, uh, and he just keeps showing up every single day. And I think uh, to, to, to go back to the part of the question you asked about last year, I think not having as much success as he thought he was because, you know, you come out, I think he was the only true freshman to start since the Brigashaw. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of hype. And then, like, you kind of hit that freshman wall. You don't finish his. But what it did is it motivated him in the off season to put in the work. And I think, you know, for 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 all the young guys, they all come in thinking, man, I, man I'm ready to play. And then they get on the field and they're like, OK, hold on, there's a lot that I have to learn. And that, that humbling process is what usually fuels them you know, to go back to work, to, to kind of hone their skills, redefine themselves so that they're better, they're better prepared. And uh, I think athletically, uh, he's, he's as good as, as I've been around athletically in the way that he can bend, the way that he can roll his hips. Uh, the way that he can move people, even though he hasn't really come into his size yet. You know, he's still a guy that, you know, would benefit from from what we call our power hour. But because he was playing as a freshman and then this year, he hasn't had a chance to uh, to go through that process. And so it'll be a build his body as we go type deal. So I think his ceiling is extremely high. But kind of getting his nose bloody uh, as a as a freshman and not and not having that success fueled him in the off season. And what you saw is you saw a different mindset. Uh, from how we ended the season where it was like, okay, you know, all my buddies are red shirting and they're hanging out and having fun. I'm playing like I'm ready for the season to be over to, you know, now he's, you know, he's pushing and fighting and playing through pain, uh, which is, you know, something that, you know, last year he didn't quite have that same mentality, which he has a different mentality this year in terms of, you know, pushing through the, uh, through the bumps and bruises and the pains of, uh, of, uh, of playing at this level. Saturday will also be senior day. Yep. A lot of these guys, I you know, like Mike, it's it's their time to walk for the last time. Mm. What have they kind of brought? What, they, what have they meant to the program? Oh, you know, you start you start with uh, Mike Hollins. I mean, can't really describe it. To be honest with you, I, I think it's he's one of those transformational type individuals that will look back years from now and be like, wow, man, we 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 were around somebody that's truly truly special. Um, you know, he's a, I would anticipate when we do our vote for captain, he'll, he'll be a team captain and, and probably get all the votes, uh, just because this time last year, where was he, right? To now where he is this year. And I don't think any of us really can, uh, appreciate or put in the context mentally what he had to do to be able to play football again. Like, and I know what I've seen from my perspective in some of the days where, you know, he's, he's been challenged, but to, to be where he is, uh, to play in the game last week, like just put that in context, for him to play in that game last week and to not only play but play well, to play hard, to play focused and not be distracted and, and not be thinking, just the mental toughness uh, that, he, that he has and he possesses. Uh, that's what, you know, I'm so grateful for because it now – Again, gets woven into the DNA of the of the of the program, right? And so, uh, guys get to see that every single day. And then, you know, the the other guys that that are seniors that that are not going to get talked about. You got guys like uh, Nate Morris and uh, Brady Sheffer and uh, all these guys behind the scenes that that really uh, kind of make things go. And uh, and it's been awesome to to be around those guys and to see them you know, buy into what we're doing, right? They didn't, they didn't have to, right? But they chose to buy into uh, to the program that we're building. And so uh, I'll always, uh, you know, be grateful for these guys. And, you know, last year we didn't get to have a senior day. You know, those seniors didn't, now we, now we made one up and we did one in the indoor and we had our own senior day, but those seniors didn't have an opportunity to get recognized in, uh, in front of the, uh, uh, in front of their fans, so it's going to be a, it's going to be an awesome day uh, to see all those guys have have their uh, have their moment to to walk out and uh, be celebrated with their uh, with their families. But um, this team right here, and I've told the staff, 
and we'll remember this football team uh, for, for the rest of our lives. And we'll remember a lot about it just because of the impact that, uh, uh, that this group of young people uh, has made on, uh, on our staff. We have a last question from Jeff because I've got Coach on a radio interview in about 12 minutes. Will you celebrate <coughs> excuse me, Thanksgiving as a, together as a team on Thursday, or do you break up into position no. groups? So, so what we'll do is uh, tomorrow night we'll have, our, we'll have our team Thanksgiving dinner, so we'll practice. Uh, there's no classes tomorrow, so we'll practice a little bit later. I think we, have a, uh, we might be 11 o'clock, start our meetings, and we're off the field at about 2.30. And then from 6 to 8, we'll have a big Thanksgiving dinner with, with all of our families, all of the players. Uh, we'll get together, uh, which is we normally do a family dinner on, on Wednesday nights anyway, but this will be more of a, a formal uh, Thanksgiving type uh, dinner with everybody there at the same time uh, eating. And then we'll practice uh, our typical time on Thursday morning, and then I give them the afternoon off, and uh, they got about a two hour radius if they want to go home. You know, we got some kids in Northern Virginia, we got some kids from Richmond. Uh, if they want to go home, they can go home and eat with their families. Uh, they do have to let us know uh, where they're going and then uh, just keeping track of the guys that, that may live outside that radius. If they don't have a teammate to go home with, then they'll, uh, we'll make sure that they have somewhere to eat uh, with, uh, with somebody on the staff. So uh, nobody will, will be on their own uh, for Thanksgiving, but I do uh, just believe in giving those guys uh, that are close. And then also, too, you got a lot of families that have come into town. So, so a lot of our players' families are in town for the, uh, for the weekend. It's an opportunity for them to, uh, to experience Thanksgiving together, and then we'll get back uh, together on Friday morning and, and finish up our, our preparation. Nobody asked you, favorite Thanksgiving side? Oh, man. Uh, it's, uh, so I actually had some, uh, some collard greens shipped in from South Carolina, so, so, I, got, so, I, got, so I got some, home, got some home, homemade uh, collard greens coming in, uh, and then, uh, man. Whew. I'm ready. It's good enough. Good enough. Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? Oh, that's a tough question. I'm not a big pie guy, right? But in my household, it was always sweet potato pie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.